Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name's Mark. I work for a company that supplies plant machinery to maintain the railway infrastructure. Um, one of the bits of kit we use is a MUPE, Mobile Elevating Work Platform. And it's a requirement if you're using the MUPE, operating it, or you're in a basket, that you have to wear a restraint harness. So the aim of this session is to introduce you to safety harnesses. And hopefully at the end of it, the objective is to carry out a pre-use inspection of a harness and to obviously wear one and correctly adjust it. Yeah. That's just an example of a harness with a, a fixed length lanyard attached to it. And um, a couple of examples of mute. Um, if you don't know what they are, they're better known as the list or cherry pickers, okay? So when we're using a mute, the safety harness is always of a fixed length lanyard and it must be in test. It's covered under the load of regulations and it will be tested every six months. The restraint harness is not a full rest harness. A restraint is to stop you getting to a, a certain area rather than catching you once you've fallen. The lanyard will always be connected in the basket to an approved anchor point, which is normally painted in red or marked in red, and it's normally got a little decal to show you that it's the approved point. A restraint harness when operating the mute. Okay, here's a short video why we would use it. <laughs> we should have had a warning there, really. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> so when we're using a harness, it must be inspected before every use, as well as under the examination scheme. Is that me? Okay, so, come around Andrew, have you ever had any experience with harnesses before? Yeah. You have, yeah? Yeah. So you're familiar with a yeah. restraint harness? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Yep, yeah, it has various different. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jake, you come across harnesses before, used them oh, in the workplace? Yeah, offshore, off I, was, I was in them. Perfect. The day, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tim? No. no, never. Nothing to do with them? No, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, go on down. Offshore, oh, yeah. Go on down. Mantles into tunnels. You always wear them, yeah? Yeah, I usually wear them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Jeff? Yeah, it's all work at night on wind turbines. So, so you've all, you're all fairly sort of. Yeah, but familiar with the exception of Tim. I am, yeah. but that thing I was talking about earlier with the brain damage, I find stuff like that really, it takes me, I'd have to go away somewhere quiet and, and work it out. It's, even though I've worn it a hundred times, it's still. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I think it is, it is difficult for all. Yeah. It, when, when you first put it out of the bag, you don't know what it is, you think, yeah. what is that? It's just a pile of webbing yeah, things, yeah. isn't it? It's, yeah. yeah. So before every use, we'll inspect it. So when we're checking the webbing, we'll look for any cuts and abrasions in the webbing, any evidence of burn marks across the webbing, broken fibres, contamination like oil, grease, paint, chemicals, all that sort of thing, and any frayed edges on the edge of the harness, and pulled stitches, like where the webbing sticks together, make sure it's coming apart. And it's a good idea to get a piece of webbing in your hand and just bend it in a U shape, just to open the fibres up to look for any, any issues that may be lurking in there. Now onto the hardware of the harness, the metal parts, 
So you've always got your D-ring at the back and you've got your, your buckles. So when we're checking them, we're going to look for any distortion of the metal. Look for any cracks, rust, damage, and sharp edges, rough edges, yeah? When we're getting a visual inspection, we'll connect the buckles together. Like so, just give them a bit of a, a pull just to make sure it doesn't disconnect. And pull it and just listen for any sounds in the webbing or the stitching, like tearing or popping noises, just to make sure that's all sound. And also check the harness. It's got its own unique ID number and it's got a in date a loaded certificate. So you just want to have a look at a little bit of webbing. Yep. Go around it quick. So what, what would happen if, um, if this could find a defect? What, what would you do? You have to be quarantined. Report it to your responsible person, your line manager, and do not use it. Yes. So it should be stamped somewhere near where the... Where the um, it, it will have a unique ID number, which on this one <coughs> is on there. Yep. And so while we're here, there's the Lola certificate for it. So that number should be on there as well, which yep. it's there, yep. and it's in date. Okay. Pass around the logo certificate as well. Mind just checking the webbing all the, all the Just have a quick look, yeah, because yeah. we're probably going to run out of time. So. Yeah. And obviously you're checking the hardware for rough edges. We're checking the hardware, there's no cracks, no rust. Because of the rust, they would damage the webbing. Yeah, they do get a lot of abuse, yeah. yeah. It looks like it's never been used. It hasn't ever been used, it's a, <laughs> yeah, you might have a quick look. I'll show you the load certificate. So when we get the harness, you'll see the serial number on it. But it's in date, that's when it runs out. And it's covered under lower regulations. Yeah. This class is a lifting accessory. But you can imagine what it's been like. It's been kicking around in the back of someone's car, thrown around on the side. They do, they do get a lot of uh, sure These guys are pretty mm. familiar. the webbing into a U shape just to try and open up the fibres if there's any any issues going on. That's the, that's the leg buckles there. Yeah, pretty, good. pretty good, yeah, it's brand new, isn't that's it? I know. <laughs> uh, have we both crossed the end line by the course of the They can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of them you can get just like seat belts, aren't they? Just click in, yeah. but they're probably not as robust as them. Well, again, it's like how often you're going to be using them as well, isn't it? If you're going to be, if you're going to be in it for long periods of time, then you want one that has little, you see climbers and stuff. You do, yes, the yes. Got ones they're not bulky. They're not, no, but they're typically we wear them, well, I don't wear them personally, but the, the users, we use them for 12-hour shifts. So they've got them on for 12 hours and they'll be five days a week. So yeah. want to be reasonably comfortable. But also when they're wearing them, they tend to have them too loose. Yeah. Which can actually cause more injury if you're going to rely on it. There is some nasty videos that I'm not going to show about it, yeah, but I've seen, I've <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've seen the easiest one. It's probably the worst one than that. There is, yeah. <laughs> I think he's talking about the same one. Bits it's popping out. <laughs> So the safety harness must be worn correctly. In the event of a fault, it works to its design potential and does not cause additional injury. So to fit it, we'll hold the harness up by its rear attachment, ensuring the leg straps will dangle free. Again, it's come out, so. As such, we'll put the arms through the shoulder straps as if you was putting a jacket on. Connect the chest buckle, adjust the shoulder strap so the rear D sits between the shoulder blades, pull the harness down, 
so that the subpelvic tract sits underneath the buttocks. Connect leg buckles and adjust to a snug fit. Okay. There's a little video on this. Okay, so when you've got a harness correctly adjusted, they say the best thing to do, once it's across your chest, put the flat of your hand in, as you saw the guy doing there. Clench your fist, and then just try and pull it out. If you can't pull it out, you know it's tight enough, yeah? Any questions? There is a couple of... Uh How often should a harness be inspected? There's two answers to this one mm -hmm. on the table. Before every, use. before every use and every six months, which is covered by a what regulation? Lola. Lola. Perfect. Does anyone know what Lola is, Marianne? Do you know what Lola is? Not, not the girl in the disco. <laughs> yeah, pretty much comes to an end of Ledger. Any questions on it? No, it's uh, fairly, fairly straightforward, ish. Yeah. It's a bit about storage. Like how should you store and where should you store these things? And should they be issued individually? We ind issue them individually as a company. Um, they can just be for use. As long as they're adjusted to the correct user, it's okay. They should be stored in their storage thing, or they could be hung up on a rack. I've seen that in workplaces where there's a, like a coat, rug coat peg and they hang their harnesses up on that. But as long as it's out of direct sunlight, free from any contaminants, you, you will be good, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that's just an example of a lanyard, fixed length lanyard. It's got no suspension on it, so it's no fall the rest. And it'll just clip on the front of your harness or the back and that'll attach the mute. And your idea is just to stop you getting out of the basket rather than catching you if you do fall. Yeah. You did mention the, you know, the, AD, the AD certificate. Yes. <coughs> is, that, is that something that the companies play to keep 
Egypt or is, is, there, is there a national record of those? We keep a record of it as well. So there is a national record? There is a record of it, yes. Yes. It's got its own unique ID number and yeah. It's all auditable for every check it's had from when it was first bought and every inspection it's had there'll be a file on a particular harness or any loose lifting accessory. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>